Alrighty, Bomber fans, I hope you enjoyed the week on top of the ladder. It has been a mighty pleasant start to the year, and hopefully it gets better on the weekend with a win over the Gold Coast Suns. Before I get into this video, I should show you guys the results from the Player of the Year votes. These are the combined results from the average placement of polls you guys left in the comments, plus my own personal votes that I released uh, during the match review video. I will show these every round preview on Wednesdays, so make sure you get the votes in after each match review. Subscribe to be involved with that. We are getting a good little bomber community here and it's awesome to see so many of you guys contributing with your votes after the big win. So we played Gold Coast on Sunday again this time at Marvel Stadium which is where I think we've always played our best footy. It really suits our speed of halfback something that is less prevalent now though under Scott. We look a bit more composed and methodical exiting D50 so it might be a different look at the home ground. Our opponent is a team we always seem to get the upper hand over. We have only lost two games against them and one came in 2016 our banned player season so we are clearly going in as favourites as especially because they looked horrid against Sydney at home on the weekend. You got two contrasting weeks. There is us over the moon on top of the ladder, big win against a rival and then them, a side down in the dumps after a horrible display at home, which is neither good nor bad. You can see great teams bounce back from adversity like this. The question is, can we really call Gold Coast a great team? Although I think Gold Coast are a better side than Hawthorne, I am more confident going into this game just after how well we looked on the weekend and how average they matched up against the Swans. And as we know, this team doesn't travel well. We even disposed of them last year when we were a shocking footy team and we did so with ease. I think this match will be a lot quicker movement wise though. Etihad Stadium always does that to games. It is always more frantic and makes pressure footy an important factor, but pressure footy is something both teams uh, seem to be instilling into their games. We both have good small forward lines, full of pace and full of tackling power. You gotta say with that pressure footy, we have the upper hand though. We were really controlled against Hawthorne and possessed mature heads despite being so young, Gold Coast really struggled to find any momentum against Sydney. They had 20 less inside 50s and that is how we played against the Hawks. We didn't let them anywhere near the 50 when we were in control. I think when we are on top it will be a similar looking game. Team wise it should be fairly similar as well. I don't think they make any forced changes. Sam Collins did suffer a head knock but I believe he will be right in time for the match if he goes down. It drastically improves our chances of winning. Uh, he is arguably their most important player after Jared Witts but I think he stays stays fit. Connor Butterick, Brandon Ellis and Bailey Humphrey were rested last week due to recent injuries but they should be right to play and could well come back in to spark some life into the squad. You don't lose by that much and keep the same team. Lockie Weller is also recovered from an AF, uh, ACL injury I should say but they may decide to leave him out for another round just to be safe. It's hard to know whether we will give Jake Stringer another week to rest especially because Matt Guelphie could be fit. He might find his way into the team. It's hard to know who he replaces though. You can't exactly justify changing a team that ran out 59 point winners. I have seen some wanting Phillips out of the side but we might want two Ruckman against Jared Witts who is so dominant in the hit-out game so Phillips might stay in. I think Witts is going to get on top of both Ruckman. It's how they match up around the ground that intrigues me more though. That is where Draper for example could find the upper hand. He rests up forward to good effect. I like our defence against that forward line. Zerk Thatcher and Laverde on King and Chole. They are really good forwards but I like our chances there uh, especially with how well we set up last week. I think we will see BZT play on King which is a great challenge for him. He received coaches votes on his last round albeit on a much worse forward line but now he has a real test against a pure full forward and I also back Laverde to keep Chol quiet at the same time. Without Rankin they are less dangerous on ground level they only had seven goal kickers against the Swans while we almost doubled that against the Hawks so I think even without Wright and if Stringer does have another week off we have more than one way to hit the scoreboard. Yet again though Weeds and Jones have really important roles they have to at least contest the aerial balls like they did against the Hawks and hit the scoreboard we need consistency in that area. Sure it was good seeing so many different players pop up for goals but that isn't going to happen every week. I'm actually not that nervous going into this match. I usually am but I feel good and I know famous last words. Now that I've said it we'll probably get done by 20 goals but I really think we are winning this. We just look a more competitive team now. Am I jumping the gun in saying that? Probably. It's only been one week of real season time but I trust Scott as a coach. I think at the very least we will know what to expect from the boys which is why he is driving us fans to be patient. He even said it after the win. We aren't changing our outlook look on the season. It's still about building our list which is why we are being so safe with injured players as well. What to expect? I expect them to be a bit more fierce than what they showed last round but I think we are the better side on paper and clearly we have a better culture at the moment. Gold Coast seem to be a bit flaky. No offence Suns fans. A win would ensure we remain in the top four which sounds pretty funny because we obviously don't 
truly belong there, but it would be a nice little morale booster for us fans who have been through so much. I think we get the job done. I think we go out and beat the Suns by five goals. Keep in mind, I predicted four goals last week, so hopefully we are along the same lines and we bring that margin up by an extra six or seven. So that is my round two preview. Let me know down below your predictions. I hope to see plenty of Essendon tips and maybe a few Gold Coast just to keep us grounded as well. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed and as always subscribe to see or to stay up to date with everything Essendon.